Hi there, my name's Ski Oakenfall and I'm a tutor here at Point Blank Online Music College. I also run my own label, Primordial Records, and over the years I've had releases on labels like BBE, Talking Loud, Ministry of Sound and One Little Indian. So I'm here today to give you a tutorial on Ableton Live, which is one of the subjects I teach here at the college. You can get loads more free content at the school's website, which is pointblankonline.net. Just go to the free courses section there. So in this video I'm going to look at the Ableton device called the Looper which is great in a performance situation but also as a writing tool as well. So uh, check it out! Here's what the Looper device looks like. It's a really handy little feature that allows you to capture any audio source on the fly, loop it up and also save it as a clip to use later in a track if you want to. I've got it incorporated into one of my live performance sets so I'm just going to have a quick shoot around the session now to show you what's going on. This is my live set here. Uh, I've got two channels which are basically pools of tunes, tracks. It's kind of fundamentally a DJ set, but what I wanted to do with my collaborator Palmskin Productions uh, when we play live is just to have a lot more flexibility to actually kind of be able to improvise a lot more. Ableton Live is perfect for that stuff because it uh, allows you to actually perform in a kind of DJ style. So we've got two channels like I said of different tracks. I've coloured them and I've also broken them up into different clips. So for one song we've got an intro, a main section and an outro. So I can kind of build the tune in that way. I've got another channel here which is for acapellas which I can drop over the top of these tunes. Uh, there's another one here which is synths so I can kind of jam over the top if I want to. And then at the end here I've got I've set up a group and there's just like a pool of beats here. So um, there we go. We can I can kind of play those over the top of, top of any of these tunes. Now, most importantly, uh, on a return over here, sorry, let me just stop this. These are the returns, and on a return, I've got the looper, and I've got a, a number of effects um, inserted on those as well. Uh, one is an auto filter, and one is a reverb. Um, but on any of these channels here, the pool one and pool two of tracks, I can send at any time that channel to the looper. Um, and I've set up on the remote SL, here um, these sends so I can choose what track I'm sending to the looper so I'm going to give you a quick demonstration of how that's working um, so let's simulate a live performance so I'm going to hit play here so this is the um, volume level I've set up for pool one channel one let's drop a beat the level for beat the beats and because this is coming up on channel one I want to send this track to the looper so you can see that I've assigned various controllers on my remote SL to functions on Ableton and the drum pads here are triggering the record and play buttons of the looper so I'm just hitting these pads now to record a section of the music now that should be in there if I bring up the, the volume now of the looper you should be able to hear it here we go. Let's try dropping another beat over the top of that. I'm going to click on the looper here, chant the return. And you can see I'm adding the auto filter to that as well. This is the original track, so I can fade in between them. Now let's try playing a track from channel two. Here we go. Now let's try sending channel two to the looper. Increase the tempo a little bit. And I've also got a return with reverb on it set up so I can actually add reverb to anything and uh, I'm just adding some reverb to the 
Looper channel here. So that's an example of what you can actually do with a looper. Now let me show you how you can set it up for yourself. I've created a brand new Ableton set just with a couple of elements in. I've got a beat here, this clip and a Rhodes here. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, go over to our devices here, open the audio effects, scroll down and look for the looper. And I'm going to drag this into a return channel, return A. And you can see that it's come up here. So this means that uh, we can then use these sends here to send the audio from that particular channel to the looper. So let's um, try that out. Now the first thing is to look at this input to output setting. Now I always set this to never, which basically means that we won't be able to hear the send from this channel uh, coming out of the return. It will basically kind of mute it. It will still be going into the input of the looper, but we won't be able to hear the output at the same time. So let's play this. And let's turn up send A. I'm going to turn it up to full. And we can see the input meter here is input in these, these roads. Now um, here we can set the quantization. And that basically means when the looper will start and stop. If it's on global, then it will start and stop recording to whatever it says up here. So let's leave it at that at the moment. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit record here. And then press play. And you can see it will stop after a bar. And it's playing. It's automatically playing. So if I mute this channel now, we can see that this looper is now looping that one bar. And in the video before, I had my remote SL drum pad assigned to the record, play and stop buttons of the looper. If I click on stop, it will stop playing. So let's try recording it a bit longer this time. Two bars. There we go. So it's recorded two bars now. And kind of on the fly, we can, we can shorten the length of this just by hitting these buttons here. That's one bar, half a bar, one beat. It's getting smaller and smaller. And we can just press stop again. Now if we change the quantization to a smaller amount, which we can do manually, we can get some really interesting effects. And um, kind of introduces more of the random element. So let's try maybe an eighth. So that's like three beats I've captured there. Let's try something even smaller. Let's try 30 seconds. And we can really do a little quick one here. And then we've got this other feature here, which is the drag me, where we can basically take whatever's gone into this record buffer of the looper. We can take that and we can drag that up there. So there we go. You can open it up into a clip. So these are the basic features of looper. There are other functions like we can kind of uh, overdub so we can record over what we've done, which is really handy. We can vary the speed. Um, we can introduce kind of feedback as well. So there's lots of functions, but I just wanted to show you the basics so you can start experimenting yourself. See you soon. Bye.